go ahead and rejoice. Lift up your voice. Praise the Lord. Woo! Woo! Glory, glory, Woo! glory. Ha, 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 ha. Woo! Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a shout right now. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. Woo. Man. Ha, ha. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. We are washed in the blood. Ha, ha. We have boldness because of the blood. Access in your presence by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of Jesus, that we overcome Satan. We overcome the accuser by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Lord, that that blood cleanses us from all sin, from all unrighteousness. There's not one thing in us the blood does not cleanse. The blood cleanses us from all guilt and shame and sin consciousness is removed by the power of the blood of Jesus and a righteousness consciousness now in our hearts that we are well pleasing to God because of the blood of Christ. You see us through that blood and that blood works on the inside of us through the power of the Holy Ghost and we thank you Lord for working in us tonight. We yield to the Holy Spirit. We listen to the Holy Ghost goes. We act on the word of God that your word works mightily in our lives. Ha, ha, ha. And we'll not look back because we're going forward into new territory and new blessing that we have a choice to rejoice and we will rejoice. We will rejoice. We have a choice. We rejoice in your goodness. We rejoice in your mercy. Ha, 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 ha. Woo. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Ha, 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 ha. Uh -huh. uh, you can sit down for a minute if you want to. Praise the Lord. Woo! Man, I'm telling you. Oh Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Open your Bible to Psalm chapter 5. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to act like the Bible is true tonight. Praise the Lord. I mean, believe it is true. We'll just start acting like it. Amen. Psalm chapter 5, it says, let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let's try that one more time. Let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice and let them ever, that means continuously, shout for joy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. How many of y'all can follow instruction? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> rejoice. And look at somebody and say, is that your rejoicing face? We just want to know. <laughs> Let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. If that's your rejoicing face, we'd hate to see your sad one. <laughs> Let all those that put their trust in thee, come on, your trust is in God, your faith and your confidence is in God. Your faith is in the word of God. Your faith is in the blood of Jesus. And he said, and let everybody that trusts your confidence in God, he said, rejoice. Let everybody do that. In other words, not 50%, 75%. Wonder what would happen if we had a service where 100% just started rejoicing. Yes. And last night we said joy is the serious business of heaven. That means in that atmosphere of joy in the Holy Ghost, God will take care of some serious business for you. While you're rejoicing here, something is happening back at your house. While you're rejoicing here, something is happening in your body. While you're rejoicing here, something is happening in your future. While you're rejoicing here, demons have to flee while you're rejoicing here. When you just count it all joy and rejoice, amen. So I like to say, I like to say, tell somebody next to you, excuse me, because tonight I need to take care of some serious business. So I hope you don't get hurt while I'm rejoicing because I'm going to get real happy because there's some serious business that's taking place. Come on, concerning your destiny, concerning the will of God for your life, concerning receiving the promises of God for your life. He said, when you rejoice, whoo, hallelujah. Pastor Chris, come up here to the front. I see you sitting back there. I got a seat for you right there. You have my seat. 
Pastor Chris or Amen. And so when you rejoice, <laughs> now I understand it may not be your personality, amen, but he's not even talking about anybody's personality. He's just saying if everybody believes God, trusts God, he said rejoice. He didn't say unless that's not your personality. <laughs> so he said, let everybody that trusts the Lord, he said, rejoice. Yeah. Amen. So I understand sometimes you don't feel like it, right? But you have a choice. Choose in life. Come on, you can choose blessing. And when you choose to rejoice, I believe that's an act of faith. Hallelujah. So the Lord said to me, if you only knew what happens in the spirit when you rejoice, he said, you would rejoice every day. All right, let's try this side over here. So the Lord said to me, if you only knew what happens in the spirit or in the unseen, when you rejoice, he said, you'd rejoice every day. Now, I don't know about you, but I have missed a few days. Anybody here missed a few days of rejoicing? So the Lord said, it's so important when you rejoice that he said, if you knew what happens, in other words, you're instructed to rejoice. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes. Amen. And so that does something in your inner man when you rejoice. Yes. Amen. It does something in your body when you rejoice. It does something in your faith when you rejoice. Yes. Amen. Amen. And T.D. Jake said years ago, if you don't rejoice, the devil will think he's winning. Yes. Hmm. Well, how many like to make sure the devil knows he ain't winning? <laughs> that he's not going to win in your family. He's not going to win in your mind. He's not going to win in your body. He's not going to win in your finances. He's not going to win in your future. Not going to win in your ministry. He just ain't going to win in nothing. So the apostle Paul, who had plenty of reasons, you know, to be struggling and complaining, he said, now thanks be unto God, who always causes me to triumph. Now, in case you don't know what that means, he said, he always causes me to triumph in Christ. He always causes me to triumph. That the word triumph is not really the fight, the battle where you win the victory. The word triumph is simply the celebration that happens after the battle has already been won. So Paul is saying the battle has already been won. And now my life is a continual celebration of that victory. All right, let's try this side over here. Come on now. He said the battle has already been won. Amen. Jesus has already conquered death, hell, and the grave. And when he was raised from the dead, he said, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. So Jesus Christ is Lord. He's the master. He's the champion. Everything he did, he did it for us, set to the credit of our account like we did it, which means his victory is our victory. Hallelujah. And so that word triumph is, in Colossians, it says that Jesus spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Now, he says he triumphed over them, spoiled principalities and powers. And other translations are real clear that when Jesus was raised from the dead, he stripped Satan from all of his power, every devil, every demon. He triumphed over them openly means it was not a private event. It was a public. So even the devil knows more about his defeat than most Christians. I said, the devil knows, and he's scared you're going to find out that he is a defeated foe. He is a wimp. Come on now. And everything he brings against your life is a joke. That's a, that's a laughing matter. Ha, ha, ha. Because you cannot be defeated in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. I love what, what uh, football coach Vince Lombardi said. He said, winning is not is not, what do you say, not the only thing. He said, winning is everything or something like that. When, if people say, winning is not everything, he said, oh, it's the only thing. He said, because if you, if you get to where you enjoy losing, you can plan on losing. 
Come on, even Nacho Libre wanted to wean. So don't you want to wean? In other words, in other words, God wants you to win in life. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Amen. And so in this triumph, he said he always causes me to triumph, which is simply an expression or an extension of the triumph of Christ. That when Jesus was raised from the dead, he had a parade through downtown eternity. Every devil, every demon, every angel, every spirit saw the triumph of Christ. And he dragged Satan through downtown eternity and exposed him shattered, empty, and defeated. Oh, my. Come on. Every accusation, every lie, every poverty, every sickness, every disease, every depression, every oppression. Don't let the devil try to drive you crazy. You drive him crazy. So you ain't driving me crazy. I'm not living in depression, oppression. Come on. Ha, ha, ha. So the triumph of Christ is really the source of our triumph. And that triumph is simply... Um, a party. It's a celebration. Ha ha. So the Lord said to me, your rejoicing is a picture of the triumph of Christ. Even if you don't feel like it, even if it don't look like victory is yours, he said, you start rejoicing. And while you're rejoicing, the devil will go ahead and pack up his stuff and get out of town. Ha 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 ha. Hallelujah. So I do some practice laughing. I laugh a while and shout a while and praise a while. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Lord said to me, your celebration is a demonstration of your expectation. In other words, if you're expecting heaven and the blessing of God and the goodness of God in the next three months of your life, your celebration is your rejoicing is a demonstration that you're expecting the blessings of God. You're expecting miracles. You will not be disappointed if your expectation is on God. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. Go ahead and practice laughing for me. Now, let's go back and read this scripture and see if we can't do a couple of things here. Hallelujah. Let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Hmm. You know, faith just comes totally before feelings, no matter how you feel. Faith is simply, the simplest definition of faith is simply to act on the Word of God. Act on the Word. Act on the Word. Act, it's not just an action. It's an action on revelation knowledge. Is acting on the word conscious that the word of God cannot lie, cannot fail. So the Lord said to me, the moment you act on the word, he said, I make myself responsible for your results. Hmm. I said, I sure like to make sure God's responsible for my results. So I just started acting on the word of God. Amen. And so he says, everybody that puts their trust in God, he said, everybody rejoice even if it's not your personality, even if you don't feel like it, even if it don't seem like a good time, even if you don't understand why the Lord told you to do that. All right, let's try that again. I said, the Lord tells you to do stuff. You don't always know why he wants you to do that, but you just say, I trust him, and he's telling me to do that for a purpose and a reason, so I'm going to rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So he says, let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice, let them ever shout for joy. Glory. Well, now you're going to have to holler. Yeah. Yeah. He said, let them shout for joy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Let them ever shout for joy. Come on, let them ever shout for joy. He said, just shout for joy. He said, just shout for joy. Hallelujah! So I just shout for joy. Hallelujah! Woo! He so says, just shout for joy. <laughs> Woo! So it must be necessary. Let's try that again. 
because my mama used to shout and praise real loud and run around the church. And it used to irritate some people and probably even my dad a little bit. So people would ask my dad, why is your wife praise so loud? Why does she shout? And then why does she rejoice like that? And then she knew the only way to express it was she'd praise real loud, shout, and then she would, she would take off running around the church. All right, so while she was running and shouting and praising, a few people would join in. A lot of people would sit and stare at her. So people say, why does your wife run around church, shout, praise like that? My daddy would say, go ask her. Don't ask me. Go ask her. So when they would ask her, they would find out that when my dad first started pastoring that church, my mama lived in depression for two years lived in total blackness, darkness, depression, would hardly even come out of the back room, would hardly even eat. In the middle of that situation, my dad had a heart attack. Come on, my, my mama's about in a, in a nervous breakdown. Dad's having a heart attack. We're poor, didn't have any money. I'm outside playing with my older brother, one year old, and cut my right thumb off in a bicycle chain, and it's still gone. <laughs> All that means is I can only hitchhike that away, so people want to say Little kids ask me what happened to your thumb, and I just say I was picking my nose and a booger bit it off. So I mean, I was... so people say, "How can God use you? You're missing your thumb." I said, "He can use you. You're missing your brain. Let him use you." So, in other words, in that time. Come on, there are times in your life when it seems like not just one thing goes wrong, but two or three things start going wrong, four or five things. You're like, seems like everything's going wrong. And the devil's really not fighting you because of where you're at. He's fighting you because of what's going to happen when you get on the other side of that trouble. Come on, so he's trying to knock you out in the middle of that problem and knock you out and wipe you out so mama's in depression. In the middle of that, somebody came and gave my dad that book on the authority of the believer. And so my dad went back to the back bedroom, got my mama to start speaking the word of God. Hallelujah. Come on, she didn't feel like it, I can tell you that. He'd say, now say this, God's not given me a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. You know, there's a time where nobody else can say that for you. So my dad said, I'm saying it, but I need you to say it. So mama would say it. He'd say, now say it again. Then he'd go to Psalm 27. The Lord is my light. And he'd say, now say that. She heard her little voice because she's bound by depression. Come on, it's a real thing. She was saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and still lived in that depression. In just the last 12 months, several pastors that are what you'd call spirit-filled pastors have committed suicide because they couldn't get free from depression and oppression. Come on, just because you're saved and filled with the Holy Ghost don't mean the devil's not going to attack you. Come on, don't act like you're exempt from the attacks of the enemy. He'll attack you. Come on, Dad Hagen said, the storms of life come to all of us. But if you'll act on the word when the storm's over, you'll be standing. Amen. In other words, in other words, the devil's gonna come try to knock knock it out of you, what God's called and the blessing of God in your life. So mama would speak the word till she just started praising and praising and praising and shouting. And then she'd come over to church and just care start praising God. And then she'd take off running. So people would ask my daddy, they'd say, Well, I don't think that's necessary. And my daddy would say, well, it's really not necessary unless it's necessary. <laughs> so while they're trying to figure that out, mama would finish running. Because there's a lot of people that think that kind of praising or rejoicing is not necessary. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not necessary unless it's necessary. That's right. <laughs> and God's not going to tell you to do something that's not necessary. That's right. Come on, he's not going to tell you to start praising and rejoicing just to try to make you look silly. In other words, there's a battle going on. Come on. And he said, in the middle of that, what you choose to do is going to determine victory or defeat in your life. Yes. Woo, come on. So my mom, praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And you have to lift your voice. Why? Because you've got to get the whine out of your voice. Let's try that again. I said, you've got to get the whine because some of you say, praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Yeah. You say, now confess the word. They say, I can do all things through Christ. He's drinking me. No, you got to get that wine out of your voice. So when you lift your voice, you're saying, I'm coming from a place of victory right now. Jesus already fought this battle for me. And by his blood, victory is mine. So I will not be silent. I lift up my voice. I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to magnify the Lord. I ain't going under. I'm going over. Woo! <laughs> Come on, when you're under pressure. I said, when you're under pressure. And sometimes you don't even know where all the pressure's coming from. But there's unseen powers coming against your mind and your life and your family. And in the middle of that, you say, I refuse to be silent. Come on, I'm not just going to sit here with my teeth in my mouth with a load of Bible verses. I'm going to load up my mouth right now, and I'm going to start saying what God says about me. I plead the blood. I, come on, my voice. I said my voice. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> so your voice, your voice, your voice. Your choice is in your voice. I said your choice is in your voice. When you choose to believe the word of God, lift up your voice and say, I will not be silent. I boldly declare Jesus is Lord. He washed me in his blood. I am redeemed and I will not be defeated. I will not quit. And devil, you can't have my family. You can't have my mind. You can't have my money. You can't have nothing around you. Oh, and you shout about it. a celebration. Come on, people shouldn't always come by your church look like a funeral when you're leaving. Come on, when they come by your church, they say, boy, them people are happy about something in there, man. They're coming out of there laughing. <laughs> the joy of the Lord. Your celebration when you lift your voice. Ha ha. Necessary. I said it's necessary. I said it's necessary. Come on, sometimes you want to ask the Lord, is there some other way that I can get this without doing that? <laughs> Please give me some other way. <laughs> that is a demonstration of the Holy Ghost and a demonstration of faith when you begin to rejoice. Because in that moment, in my parents' life, whoo, come on. The enemy coming against their church, that little church, you know, a little town, 3,000 people. But my dad pastored there 50 years, and 50 pastors and missionaries were sent around the world from a little town of 3,000 people. I said, only 3,000 people in town. And 3,000 people in town. My daddy pastored that church 50 years. And boy, I'm telling you, <laughs> they had some challenges. But in the middle of it, listen, remember how you got the victory the last time. That's the same way you're going to get it next time. Amen. Amen. In other words, you, the Lord's lining you up for a major breakthrough. But remember how you got it for things to turn in your life. Because you're going to need another turn. So my dad, mom, they'd praise, and that little old church would come on, and 3,000 3, people in town, and my daddy's church started growing, and the Baptist and Methodist came over there, got filled with the Holy Ghost. President of the bank came over, got filled with the Holy Ghost. And the church grew, coming to over 1,000 people. Only 3,000 people in town. My daddy's church had 1,000 in his church. And then I called him in 1985. I said, how many did you have in church this Sunday morning? He said, we had 2,400 people in church. Ooh, that means one church to take over the whole town. 
Ha, ha, come on now, this church to take over the whole town. In other words, come on, be the biggest, fastest growing church in town. People getting a hold of the word and people came from all walks of life and the president of the bank came and my mama kept praising just like he wasn't there. All right, you can't change the way you praise because of who's sitting around you and who's sitting next to you. You can't change the way you praise just because you got some money. Come on, y'all used to praise better before you got some money, and now you sit there like you're smart or something. You don't have nothing that the Lord didn't give to you. If it wasn't for the mercy of the Lord, you wouldn't even be alive right now. You ought to praise him like you did before you ever had a dime. You ought to praise him. Oh, my God. Ah! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Not only the Lord turned the whole church around, sent out pastors all over the world, but one cowboy with blue jeans and a pair of cowboy boots, snap shirt, came to my dad's church and gave him $1.2 million. Hmm. You would have never known he even had $1.2 because he just praised like everybody else. But he brought in a million. Everybody went, hmm. Huh. They, got, they don't just praise loud. They got some money down there. I said, I don't just praise loud. I got some money over there. In other words, in other words the earth is the Lord's. And the scripture says, when you begin to praise God, the earth will yield its increase. All right, let's try that. Say, come on. I, come on. He said, the earth will yield its increase while you're praising and giving glory to God. Man, money starts moving and land and property starts coming into your hands while you're praising and giving glory to God. <laughs> Woo! Man. So same guy came back the next year, gave my dad another million. Hmm. There ain't no shortage of money. Are y'all still here? If you only knew what happens in the spirit when you start praising, and you start rejoicing, things start moving, angels start going out on assignment, the harvest start coming in, the blessing of the Lord begins to multiply. If you knew what happened in the spirit, you'd get up every morning and start saying, praise God, glory to God, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, that you always cause me to triumph. Thank you, Lord, I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just practice for a minute. Let me give you a chance to practice. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. Praise God. Glory. Come on, my glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Look at the person next to you and say, is that the best you can do? I ain't heard nothing out of you. I ain't heard a beep out of you. Come on, I preached in the, I preached in the prisons and the jail. I preached like this, and the guys that not been in the prison, been in jail, boy, they, someone, one, one, in one place, they started laughing at me. I said, you laughing at me? I ain't in here. You in here. I'm the one free. I'm the one driving the truck. I'm the one flying the jet. Don't be laughing at me. You're the stupid one that got put in here. I said, now who wants to get filled with the Holy Ghost? 25 of them came out from and said, fill me with the, I want to get filled with the Holy Ghost. The 
the devil will make you a fool and you're too dumb to know it. But the moment you yield to the Holy Ghost and act on the Word of God and start praising God, you'll never be a victim again the rest of your life. Ah, don't you laugh at me. Ah, ah, <laughs> hey! <laughs> laughing at me. Hey, glory. <laughs> Well, excuse me. <laughs> Get up out of there. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Hey, I better lift my voice. Woo! Ha ha. Sit back down just for a minute. Hebrews 13, 15 says, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. The fruit of our lips means it's not just something that you're thankful on the inside. The fruit of our lips means it must be said, expressed. So the Lord said to me, there's no such thing as unexpressed thanks. Because some people think they're real thankful, but you just don't hear nothing out of them. Somebody else paying your meal, paying to take care of you, and you sit there with an attitude like that, you got a problem. That's right. That's right. That's right. I'm not telling you to thank me, but there is a God that created you, that's had mercy on you, and you can't just sit there and be quiet. If you thank him, you're going to have to say something about it. You're going to have to lift up your voice. Come on, you got Arnold here is served in the Vietnam War, wounded in the Vietnam War. He's an American hero. I took him to, to he went to Vietnam with me. I said, Arnold, I want to thank you for serving our country and the freedom that we have. Come on, how many people should you be giving thanks to your mama, your daddy, your pastor, come on, and your God and say, thank you, Lord. And sit there and act like you deserve all that. You deserve nothing but hell. But Jesus redeemed your life on the cross. Jesus saved your life. You better say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Woo, thank you, Lord. What does that mean? Where would I be if it hadn't have been for the mercies of God? Thank you, Lord. Woo. Ha ha.
Thank you that I'm still alive. Thank you that I got breath right now. Thank you, Lord, that you delivered me from death itself. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sit back down just a minute. I'm just about finished. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the word. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for the people you brought in my life to help me in critical times in my life. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So people ask, they say, why, why? My mama, why are you running around the church? She said, you got to know where I came from. I was in a pit of darkness and depression. Come on, self-destructive suicide. But Jesus was the only one that brought me out of that pit. And the word of God brought me out of that. And I got to give him thanks. 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 I got to give him praise. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Woo! <laughs> oh, glory. Thank you, Lord. 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 Woo! Thank you, Lord. Mama. Ha, 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 ha. Woo! In everything, give thanks. The first step to living unholy is being unthankful. All right, sit back down just for a minute. So here's what the Lord said to me. He said, there's no such thing as unexpressed thanks. Hmm. Then he said this to me. He said, you cannot cure everybody's unthankfulness, but you can cure yours. Hmm. Hmm. Once your unthankfulness is cured, everything else will have to be cured. When you start thanking and magnifying the Lord and lifting up your voice, that means you can't do it silent. And you lift up your voice and start giving praise and thanks to him. Thank you, Lord. It says in the Old Testament, wow, they were singing praise to God. Oh, are y'all still hear me? Wow, they were singing praise to God. I don't even know if I'm going to finish this sermon. You better just come back tomorrow night. While they were singing praise to God. I'm not ashamed. Come on now. Come on, you can't get somewhere and think everybody owes you something. Nobody owes you nothing. I take you to some of the countries I go to and see how they live, and you'll come back to America and say, thank you, Lord, for America. Thank you for this nation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for hot water. Thank you for running water. Thank you, thank you for freedom here. Come on. Thank you, Lord. When I got out of jail, my parents shipped me to East Africa. They said, see if you can't get thankful and then we'll bring you back. You live like that a while with bed bugs biting you. And the poverty, and you drink water that looks like mud. When you get home, you say, thank you, Lord. I did not even know how unthankful I was. 
Don't look at nobody right now. I said, we didn't, I didn't even know how unthankful I was. I just didn't express it. Felt mistreated. So there's something about giving thanks and lifting your voice. It says, when they begin to sing praise, give thanks to God. Come on, you don't have to be that smart to do this. You don't even have to be good looking to do this. Look at somebody and say, you got a chance. Listen, you don't have to be good looking. You don't have to have a PhD. You don't have to have a lot of money. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You just got to say, I'm going to give thanks to God. I'm going to give thanks to the Lord. I'm going to give thanks to him for his word. My, my mama started doing that. The Lord turned their situation. And every time we had a fight of faith in our family, I could hear my mama. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the blood. I have faith in the blood. I mean, I can hear it in the house, not just the church. Walking around the house. Thank you, Lord. Come on, I thank you for the blood. Devil, you can't have my family. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Lord. You got to lift your voice. Your voice is your address. Paul and Silas at midnight. Darkness at midnight. Their hands were bound. Their feet were bound in the inner prison and their backs were bleeding. At midnight, whoo, they started praying. And then they lifted their voices and sang praises to God. Praise God. And it says, and the prisoners heard them. So that was not a silent prayer meeting. The Lord said to me, silent praise gets silent results. So it said, the prisoners heard them. There ought to be some heathens hear you. Praise in God. Come on, if they can cuss, you can praise. Come on now, if they can cuss. You can say, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Praise God. <laughs> so my mama be praising the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I was in East Africa. I saw this one little woman. I was 17 years old in a mud church. And this woman came up to me, and she was so happy. She didn't have any legs. And she was serving in the church, walking around on them stumps in the dirt. And she was happier. And she didn't have nothing, live in a mud house. And she was saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And she's walking around there on them stubs, giving me a hug. And she's happy. And I thought, man, I'm, I got all kinds of stuff, and I'm not happy. Listen, having stuff ain't going to cure your unthankfulness or your unhappiness. Come on, the stink is under your nose. It don't stink everywhere you go. You stink. It's your attitude that stinks. You say, well, it stinks all the churches I've been to because it didn't stink till you got there. I'm leaving town, so y'all get mad if you want to. In other words, that attitude, you can cure it just by giving thanks to God. Amen. And when Paul and Silas began to sing praises to God, I don't know if they could sing. You know, I used to pray I could sing until I heard you. Then I started praying you could sing. But anyway, I, I don't know if they could sing good, but they lifted their voice. You don't have to have a pretty voice. I said, you don't have to have a pretty voice. Now listen, and the Lord will leave you in certain situations until you get thankful. All right, let's try this side over here. You say, wonder when I'm going to get out of this. Wonder when that's going to get out. I wonder how long this is going to be. Till he can hear your voice saying, thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. When he starts hearing that, he says, all right, you ready to come out of that? <laughs> Man, they're praising God. The prisoners heard him. Woo! But it wasn't just the prisoners that heard him. How I many know oh, God's got some ears? 
Come on, it says in the book of Psalms that, the, that my voice came in, went right into the ears of God. And as soon as my voice went into his ears, it says then the power of God came down and God shook my situation and turned my situation around. And the power of God hit that prison and everybody's chains fell off. Paul, Silas, all the doors came open. So I love it because I thought when I get to heaven, I'm going to check out that video. That Paul and Silas in prison, backs bleeding, hands bound, feet bound. And they're thinking, all right, Mr. Devil, you did a good job. You got my hands. You got my feet. You got me embarrassed. You beat my back. Got me in the deepest prison. But devil, you made one mistake. You should have taped my mouth shut. Come on, you got my hands. You got my feet. But you made a big mistake, devil. You should have taped my mouth shut. Because long as I can open my mouth, long as I can open my mouth, long as I can open my mouth, Long as I can lift my voice, long as I can give praise to God. Hey! Come on, give the Lord a shout right now. Come on, devil. You should have taped my mouth shut. Ha, ha, ha. Woo! Lift your voice. Come on, lift your voice. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Glory! Praise God! Glory to God! Glory to God! Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, I could praise him all night. It wouldn't be long enough. I could praise him all day. Wouldn't be long enough. I could give him thanks. Thanks in the morning. Thanks in the evening. Woo, in the power of God. Stay on your feet for a minute. Ha, ha, ha. The power of God came down in that prison shook it. Not only did Paul and the chains fall off of him, but everybody went free. Your praise is affecting people that you don't even know. Your praise will change people in your family. Shook the prison. Come on, Paul wasn't praising. And then he gets news that a prison across town got shook and, and everybody went free. No, no. He wouldn't say, Jesus, you missed. That's when the Lord said to me, your voice is your address. Your voice. Because there's no other voice like your voice. Nobody else can praise for you. Nobody else can thank for you. Nobody else can speak for you. Your voice. Woo! I didn't say you felt like it, but you better stir yourself up and open your mouth and start praising God, lifting your voice. Ha-ha! Ha 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 go ahead and laugh a minute. Ha 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 Praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for my church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Woo! Glory to God. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Singing praises to God. If you only knew what happens when you lift your voice. Hallelujah. Come on, even if you don't feel like it, maybe you need somebody to help you. Say, what you going to say about that? You going you gonna to pray? You say, well, I don't know if it's going to do any good. Oh, yeah, it's going to do some good. All the goodness of God comes on that thankfulness. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, when they began to sing praises to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, things started turning, right, while they were singing praise to God. Come on, in your life and in your future, things will turn tonight while you're praising God and lifting your voice. Things will turn tonight. Ha, ha, ha. Praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. Ha, 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 ha. Woo. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Woo! You never understand faith until you understand giving thanks and giving praise. You'll always struggle in your faith until you just start praising God. It says Abraham became strong in faith, giving praise and glory to God. Even Dad Hagen said, he said, I never even had been filled with the Holy Ghost yet as a Baptist. He said, I was just laying there on that bed. He said, I'd never seen anybody lift their hands and praise God out loud. He said, but I laid on that bed with seven incurable diseases, and I believed. I received my healing. And nobody taught me. He said, but I lifted my hands on that bed. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What's going on? Man, there's a faith fight going on here right now. The devil said, you'll never get out of that bed. You'll never get your healing. He's going, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Finally, finally came over to a church like this and saw people with their hands up going, well, that's what I was doing. Come on, lift your hands. Say, hey, praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I lift my hands. I lift my voice. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You have redeemed my life. Woo! Go ahead and shout about it right now. Glory! You redeemed my life. Glory! Ha ha ha! Woo! <laughs> Some of you here tonight, your life, your future, your destiny is hanging in the balance. And you have a choice. And what will you choose? And where will you go? Will you choose life? Will you choose blessing? Will you choose Jesus? Will you choose his word? You have a choice. And I was 17 years old, and my friends took me to jail with them. And I realized we really were not friends. <laughs> Come on, every kind of drug around, and they're saying, you my friend. Well, I ain't going to hell with you. So I said, I'll be your friend, but if you want to see me, I'll be up on the second row of the church with my hands up saying, thank you, Jesus. And I found out they didn't want to go up there. You can praise long enough until it'll change some of your friends or it'll get rid of some of them. All right, let's try that again. I said, I said you can praise God long enough 
Come on, matter of fact, you girls go out on a date with somebody. You say, before we go, I need to thank the Lord right now. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm washed in the blood. Thank you, Lord. I'll serve you all of my life. If the boy just sits there, get out of the car and don't go nowhere with him. Or the girl, either way. But your destiny is hanging tonight. And right now, you decide. You got a choice. You can say yes to Jesus, and you can say, I'm going to lift my voice, I'm going to praise the Lord, and I'm going to serve the Lord. And things will turn tonight. I said things will turn tonight. In your health, in your future, and in your finances. Some of you struggling in areas of your life, but it'll turn tonight. It's already turning. The moment you start praising and things. Ha, 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 ha. Some of you may say, I want to do the will of God. I want to serve God. I want to obey God. Listen, how am I going to get there? You're going to get there through thanking and praising and magnifying the Lord. That's how I'm going to get there. You in that turning point right now, I want to pray for you tonight. Step out from where you're at and come down here right now. You say, I'm in the turning point right now in my life. Things are hanging, and I believe it's turning tonight. You come up here right now. I'm going to lay hands on you for a fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost. Come running up here right now. Just get in a single line.